Okay, dear Rebels, sisters and brothers, Tamil friends, it's a time for our day's Tamil talk. May everyone settle down for the talk and give the consent with three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tas bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas Katancha bhikkave bhikku Bala sampanno hoti idha bhikkave bhikku aradda viriyo vihrati kusalanan dhammanam paha akusalanan dhammanam paha naya kusalanan dhammanam upadaya thamava dalla parakkamo anikkitta duro kusalesu dhammesu titi Dear venerable sisters and brothers, Dhamma friends, Whenever we are coming to a full-time retreat, or we call residential retreat, we take a fair amount of time for theoretical understanding, for book knowledge, get theory understanding, or we call listening Dhamma. So this hour is allocated for that kind of Dhamma talk. One hour is a, a worthwhile time period under any cultural situation, we are taking, going to take one hour and to uh, facilitate our journey already we are on the way. For that, uh, we have selected one particular discourse from the, the basket of discourses we call Sutta Pitaka. Uh, it is uh, quoted from the Numerical collection number four, there are basically four points uh, at the outlook. There the Buddha explained in a, in a aesthetic way, in a kind of a very um, social way, even though it's a philosophical thing, giving examples so that people can fairly understand and by repetitive listening and repetitive understand, uh, studying you can go deep and deep and deep but the early part the explanation the presentation is the Buddha says whenever uh, according to the early way of uh, ruling rulers are known as kings and they have a uh, thoroughbred horse, very, very rare thing and very precious. And only a worthy and qualified thoroughbred horse only, a king is selecting as the royal horse. So these qualities uh, make the horse royal. So four qualities the Buddha is enumerating. Equally, whenever a human being uh, marching toward the Nibbana, becoming a nun or monk or lay male or female, they also must have these qualities uh, to end the task in a desired manner. Otherwise, if the, if the thoroughbred horse is not qualified, it will run away whenever the king is confronted in the war. With so much of difficulties are there, but the thoroughbred uh, horse always uh, is keeping the king in the king's sleep position. Never return back, never run away to the bewilderment. So likewise, uh, there is a long history whereby how to select the horse catch horses from the wilderness and train them and out of them the best one is the one presented to the king and king is using usually for his uh, normal trip as well as for the warship warfares and that kind of a thing out of the animal kingdom the humans are very very rare 
their brain development has come up to a level whereby they can self-examine themselves, not animals, not any other ghosts or any um, celestial beings. They can't reflect upon themselves. Therefore, <clears throat> not the whole the animal king is selecting as the, for the worship. They are taking the elephants and take horses and chariots and uh, soldiers, only four things. So likewise, out of human, out of animals, humans, they are born lucky people. They have birthrights, the great quality, sometimes superhuman. They don't know. So how to breed, breed them? Their breeding and selection is uh, very common in agricultural work as well as in animal husbandry, uh, crossbreeding as well as selection. Earlier, crossbreeding was not much used, but selection criteria were the things the Buddha is quoting here. Nowadays, of course, genetical uh, engineering and so many of things are happening. But earlier the selection was the main thing they have done and later crossbreeding. Then only they are making uh, thoroughbred horses and elephants are also the same. So exactly in the human being, to be a human being is not a joke. They are, they are born lucky people. They are making a totally unwanted situation on the earth disturbing the environment and exploiting the other things, exploiting the animals, exploiting other human beings. That is because, because they have not thoroughbred. They are not selected properly. But the potential-wise, but the possibility-wise, we are equally the same. The Buddha is the first person understood each and every human they have the possibility, they have the, the probability to become supreme. They fully understand what is happening inside the mind. But they are totally wasting while away the time. About the past and the future, other people and other places. So much busy. So they have no time to reflect upon who am I? What am I? They are very, very serious questions. They are very philosophical questions. But no one, our, our parents are not gearing us, not directing us to look at it. They are giving the caste system, education, qualifications, and all the other nonsense. But never check the human quality. So therefore it's a very common, it is to say, present day, common sense is the most uncommon thing. They are specialized in all the subjects, but they are not human. They, have to, they don't have common sense. Because our parents are completely misleading. All the parents are, present day. And I think many of you all are parents. You also do the same. Same mistake. Misleading children, mislead the students, everyone to look outside for the prosperity, for the thoroughbredness. But the Buddha says, no, it is something internal. So therefore you have to select uh, among the animals, only human beings uh, are being selected. The Buddha's dealing is basically with the human and number of occasions. Buddha himself told, I am not a celestial being, I am not a god, I am not Brahma, I am a human. This is the only person out of the all the other Religious master, he told, I am a human. Again and again he is telling. He says, you, everyone, you, every one of you have the same capacity. But your selection criteria are utterly failed. So they should have a filtering system, selection criteria, whereby you will be slowly, slowly put into the chain and little by training and all the qualities will come. For that, the ideal uh, thing is Buddha represent as the bhikkhu, the, the monk, or nun, is the super thoroughbred horse. You can use for anything. It is kind of a 
supreme representative of a human being. So selection criterion is the one, these people come into the retreat, they know. They know this is the selection way. We are advancing slowly, slowly to be a disciple of the Buddha as a ordained or non-ordained, as a male or female. It doesn't matter. So many people consider this as nonsense. Why should we meditate? Why should you go to the meditation centers? Why should we have the residential retreat? Because there are so many universities can give any qualification, can give any good packet of wage. And that is what we are chasing about. But you imagine we people here, they have something different. They have come into this selection, come into the filtering system, and they don't, we don't consider the Buddha is 2,600 years old. We consider it is living now. So therefore we have to take time. I mean, take, imagine about each and every individual taken the time and the uh, strategies to come here. It is not a coincidence. So after coming, the game is not finished. After coming, we have to still listen. We have to deductively understand it. And we have to put it into practice. For what? To be a thoroughbred horse. The first quality yesterday, when Chandratana would have taken, is that must have the appearance. To be a bhikkhu, to be a high ordained monk, that he must have all the human characteristics without losing any, even a fingernail, must not be lacking, must not have serious diseases. Only human being can be a bhikkhu. That appearance, it being ex accepted even in Brahmanism. If you wish to be a teacher, you must have a pleasant look. Imagine the, the image of the Buddha. It's called Mahapurusha. No any garlandi, no cosmetics, no anything outside, but you see the features. Even a human body cannot possess so much of qualities. Each and every one of us should have these qualities, I mean appearance, uh, that today now I am not going to expand it further because the Venable Chandratan would have taken. The second quality is the what uh, we have assigned for today, that's for the strength. The horse must have the strength. Everyone, every horse sees not the answer. In by selection, you have to have the long distance traveling and have the strength, even in the desert, even without much of food, it has to carry. Or you will compare it with if the bhikkhus are not very common, you can see a girl guide and the scouting. They are also preparing and selection people to be in the present moment. The first caption in the scouting is, be prepared. The thoroughbred horse is, must be ready all the time. Just, uh, it can't say now I have to get, take a rest and I have to take this and that, no. We, we don't know where, whenever the, the journey happened, whenever the war happened, don't know. So horse must be ready. So therefore, human being must be alert, must be diligent, must be vigilant all the time. So therefore, before meditation, before taking up the meditation, we make a theoretical ideal telling, from morning to evening we have to sit and meditate, from morning to evening we have to do walking meditation, and 24 hours we have to be mindful, but our mind is just like a wild buffalo, just like a monkey mind. How can I do? 
So therefore, many, many uh, lay people, even the monks, they don't even take the task of mindfulness. Because they think maximum, they think whole day. At the end, it is the yes. But at the beginning, you have to start somewhere. And while you keep on practicing only, you learn how to have the steadfast mindfulness, not the momentary mindfulness, not the broken mindfulness, steadfast, steadfast mindfulness. And it is kind of a it's kind of a stir, it's kind of a catalyzer. Your mind is always alert. Hardly any human can think about that. They think, uh, how many hours I have to maintain? Uh, Fifteen minutes, uh, is it enough, Bhante? One hour, is it enough, Bhante? And all the rest of the time, you are playing hell. Mind is unmindful, sending kites. And, and by doing one hour, is it enough? No, 24 hours. At least theoretical level. So therefore, that strength is called sustainable strength. Not that you are just going to the Olympic and get the medal and come back and sleep at home. No. The, and the farmers, they are very busy during the rainy time. At the time, they are not. Soldiers are very busy once they mobilize, once the army mobilized. But the monk, 24 hours, 7 days, 30 days per month. 365 a year, no resting time. No resting time. So that is the same thing we assume when we are preparing the timetable for the meditators. So many hours walking meditation, so many hours sitting meditation, and while eating, while bathing, doing anything, you have to be mindful. Slowly, slowly, we are introducing each and every action. Be mindful. Uh, I try to explain in the question and answer session also, while you are sitting, you may be observing or you may be distracted by sounds, or you may be distracted by pain, or distracted by thoughts, or visuals kind of thing. Whatever it happens, breathing never stops. With all the distraction, if you may prepare your mind, if you are be ready, prepared mind, you can see while you are listening, breathing happens. While you have thinking, breathing happens. So that kind of a, that kind of a arousing, that kind of a sustainable mindfulness, no one talk before seventies. On this earth, no one was thinking about this mindfulness. They were thinking about the economical development and technological development, infrastructure development, and that chemical, this chemical. But no one was thinking. But each and every discovery was at failure. All the appointment was disappointing. In the 70s, the mindfulness came. But not to Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan, we accepted we are Buddhist country, we are the people teaching Buddhism and we are Dhamma Deepa, all the kind of bragging. But in the 70s, no one on, the, on Sri Lanka knew even the mindfulness, how to be catalyzed, how to be awakened, how to be alert. 80s, still no. 90s, people little by little, they came to know most serious message of the Buddha is to be strength, develop the strength, you have to be mindful. You have to understand who am I. But whenever you go and sit, mind is wandering. Whenever you start walking, mind is wandering. When you are eating, mind is thinking something and wandering. When you are taking a bath, mind is wandering. So everyone think, everyone complain, no, I am not the proper person, I am not the, my method is not method, my teacher is no good, my object is not object, because it's a failure. Now, I am in this field for 40 years. 
not a single person was happy about his or her meditation. Not a single. Being so, still practicing means superhuman. Even without so much of promising results, but still someone is practicing. That is the what the Buddha is appreciating. To practice like that, to gain the energy, you must be alert, you must be mindful, you must be diligent. Then you find that they, at times you are utterly strength, very strong and very powerful and you are at peak. But again it goes to the very low ebb. You are utterly lost, very deprived, depressed and uh, tensed. And then you commit suicide and uh, cursing the authorities and all the kinds of things. And again, catching the momentum and you become very powerful. And you think that you are the person with your will and volitional and uh, strategies, you become uh, powerful and you are a failure is the word that you become lack of energy, lack of power. But it is not the case. When you're observing at yourself as a second person or third party, you see there is a video camera here, and if imagine that uh, you let you to work under the v CCTV camera, and later you see the action replay, slow motion, then you can see at a time you are very energetic, at a time you are very lethargic, at a time you are successful, at a time you are not. Even though you claim that success is mine or failure is mine, that means you are, you, are, you are rushing to a decision rather than understand the long wave cycles. This is about the short wave cycles, success and the failure. But the mere observation says you can observe yourself and the energies are going up and down, just like sea waves. And occasionally there is a the high tide and low tides, and still rare occasions, tsunami. Normal waves are there, tidal waves are there, tsunami waves are there. So observing that only the Buddha says, if you wish to be an energetic person, you have to observe yourself, leaving aside all the other tasks. Who the hell is going to give time for us to observe ourselves wholeheartedly, leaving us out all the tasks? Because we have so much of responsibilities. We have so much of duties. We are because we are running families and organizations and kind. They will never allow you to be silent and close your eyes and sit and observe. They consider this as wastage of time. This stage of energy. They think creativity, very good. Productivity, very good. You are just a beast. You are a draft animal. You don't know who are you, who am I? But the religious people call you, yes, yes, you are a beast of burden. But occasionally, don't you have even few minutes per day? For half an hour per, per week, just to observe your capacities and your weaknesses, your abilities and disabilities, we consider it's unfair because it's very selfish. I am looking at myself instead of what about my children, what about my parents, what about my subordinates. So we consider that's very compassionate and creative and productive. That's the way we while away are our time. At the end of the bid, at the death bid, utter failure, utter disappointment. The Buddha says, Atito Kamadaso Uno. We at the death bid, we never fulfilled. Not only we, our parents never fulfilled. Grandparents, grand grandparents, no one. That's why they are again coming into the sansara. Atit, uh, uno. Atito, never unsatiably hoping something. And same thing we are passing to children. The same thing passing to our neighbors. 
unsatiable. And Kamadaso, always with the sensuous desire or sexual desire, if I am to quote Sigmund Freud. Everyone's behavior can explain to the sexual desire. But the Buddha put it in a social way, he says, sensual desire. So we are kind of a, kind of a robots like creatures run with that. So therefore you have no time to observe yourself. Even if you observe, we read few reports today, everyone was not happy. They know it is happening, happening under very nose. They know it is not a fabrication, it is exactly happening, but no one is happy. Because we are chasing behind results, result-oriented game, no rat race. But instead, if you wish to be strong and a thoroughbred horse with the strong, Buddha says, observe with that kind of adverting of the mind, that kind of a view, that is to say, uh, Uppannanam papakanam auksalanam dhammanam pahanaya. We have some wrong skill, wrong deeds, and unskillful things, sometimes habituation, sometimes due to the misunderstanding, sometimes due to our unupmanship. So therefore, just observe, even when you are doing nothing, for example, you close your eyes and cross-legged and keep in the palm upon the palm and just observe. You are not uh, chasing behind uh, any, any other competition, just see, and still there are some unskillful things happens. No one can see it without attribution to the self selfishness. You can't observe them, you can't report them, you can't put into the positive way because you consider unwholesome thing must not be reported, unwholesome thing must not be observed, unwholesome thing must not be there because I am such a superior being. But instead the Buddha says, your mind is first and foremost occupied with the neutral recurrent object. To, to name the breath. First and foremost, you introduce a neutral object, not the positive, not negative, and it is a recurrent one. As far as your body is living, the breath is there. And keep that as your datum line, as your benchmark, as your reference point, and tr see how much mind is running bewildered, fantasizing, daydreaming, planning, all the kind of thing, and they consider it as a creativity, as a productivity. But you can't keep in this simple task. There is no maleness or femaleness. There is no ordained or non-ordained. There is no Buddhist and non-Buddhist. Whenever you introduce a neutral object, after the compromising with the Buddha, and we think it is the way to keep the mind occupied with the recurrent object, the breath or expansion, contraction, rising and falling, or the sitting, how when you are sitting, how, the, how you touch the ground, how you touch the seat. And if you simply try to observe the mind with that, you can see our mind is just a monkey mind. It is not happy to be in this clear land. It is not happy to be in the least frictional way. It is not happy to be at the comfort zone. Always jumping. Are you consider this as me? This jumping nature? Is it mine? Is it myself? If that is me and mine and myself, is it for my well-being? Never. Of course, the breath is not going to give you much of the thing, but it's a neutral thing. Whenever you focus the attention to this pivotal point, the benchmark or the datum line, then only you can see how much mind is trying to be a smart, how much it is trying to be one-upmanship. And doing all the smart things and tricky things, it proves by itself you can't be at the middle 
it appears like not enough. You might have to have something extraordinary. Ultimately, you can't even be ordinary. But if that task is being introduced at the age six, you would have been much more successful. Would have taken it as a hobby. Would have taken it as a kind of a game. But you all, all crock too old. You can't, because so much you have you put your mind in a wrong track, in a rut. So you need that rut. Whatever it may be, what is your liking and disliking, you don't consider the neutral object as something achieved, something positive. But the Buddha says, no, no, don't think about the positive, just keep the mind in the neutral. Therefore the breath becomes spiritual now. And it says, I think I am just copying, it says, for example, if you are going to live about 100 years, your breath cycles will be 13 million breaths you are given with, you are endowed with, you are, you are opening balance. So if you are going to rush and spend the breath in, <laughs> like a running horse, you will die at 75 or 80. But you are going to live, expend, spend, sorry, spend the breath very calm and quiet, you will be living 120 years. You are, you are using the breath very economically. But you don't know how the breath is spent. Well, that is not very important in our day-to-day -day life because our important thing is our children, our money, our uh, the movable properties, immovable properties, parents and wars and the corona and the no petrol, no diesel. All the problems are obsessed with. We don't know how many millions we spent. How many millions left over? Because our, our values completely bewildered. But still, now it's not too late. Wait for the next breath. And see how calm, how quiet, I'm ready to accept choicelessly. So when it is happening, I mean, we are, when we are keeping the track with the in-breath and out-breath, it's a completely reshuffling, completely new evolution is going to take place. Even one split second, you can be with the breath that indicates your potential, indicate your possibility, you can do. Whatever the bad thing we have done, whatever the unskillfulness we had, next moment still I can be with the breath. That means our oh, it's complete unskillful thing, null and void. Because next moment I can be with the breath. So if that message is crossed, this retreat is 100% successful. If that message is communicated, if that message is crossed, this retreat is 100% successful because you have your own right, your own birthright, Whatever the wrong thing, whatever the wrong livelihood I had, next moment I can be under your very nose. Be here and now. The Buddha says, be here and now, only for a split second. Is a one fourth of your whole strength, whereby you can say, as far as you are in here and now, your whole uh, Unwholesome will be done with. You understand, I can. You are not a murderer. You are not a culprit. You are not in the prison. You are a normal being. So therefore, you know whatever the bad thing you have done, but still the nature has excused you, you can be here and now. And while we are being here and now, how can you assure the next consecutive thought moment also mindful? That is the task I give upon your shoulder. Once you develop the mindfulness, once you 
upright the mindfulness, how can you make sure the next thought moment also mindful? That is a task. That is a task. I, we will put it in the common language, so social language, we say, why I can be mindful for only one breath, we'll say, in breath, okay, it's, it's a great achievement. What about the next out breath? And you put your strength, you put, your, put forth your strength and say, yes, Bhante. Now I can be one in breath and one out breath, oh, what a wonderful thing. Because two thought moments, no defilements. And the day you report, I can be four breath cycles, five breath cycles, five seconds, five minutes. You see how much the gathering, the momentum, the catching, the, the steadfast development of the mindfulness. That is always encouraging. Even though the sounds are there, even though the thoughts are there, even though uh, pains are there, more you fought forward, Fourth energy, you can see not only one breath cycle, two, three, four, five, like that. So then, what the Buddha is telling now, you know the art of not to arouse unarisen defilements because your mind is occupied with the breath, or we can say with mindfulness, or we can say with your posture, or you can say. Uh, your expansion, contraction of your body, whatever may be, whatever you select. But still, but still, when you are going 10 minutes mindful, 15 minutes mindful, when it's happening, there is a kind of uh, unself, the kind of uh, boredom, kind of a monotony, kind of a sleepiness, kind of a outcasted like you get lost like, the feelings start. So you think, I am a very good person, I am meditating, but I kept my mindfulness also with five minutes, ten minutes, but still, you see, I feel like get up and go. I feel like boring. I feel like monotonous. I feel like lost. You never think that must be reported. You never think that must be related to the teacher. You think, no, no, it is my mistake. So therefore, you get up and go, and you never report it. But it's very interesting self-observation. Not only uh, keeping the track with the mindfulness, as and when it is going, you are not accru accumulating. You are not uh, gaining any... Uh, unskillfulness, but you have past memories, you have already accumulated past karma going to surface now. They are called psychological wounds. No two people report the same thing. Same person never report the equal things. Your psychological wounds going to surface because when you keep on practicing mindfulness, for example, sitting, Mindfulness, your eye is not getting impingements closed. Your ears not getting any sound impingements. Nose, tongue, body. So therefore, mind experience, no more new thing happens. So this is the only time your library shots, your past memories, your habituation, your personality traits, your directed dispositions going to surface. It is quite unrelated to the present moment. Therefore, you can't relate. How come that? Because I am very happy and very successful in my mindfulness, but still this wrath, this pus, this carp coming again and again and again and again. So this is the second kind you have to understand whatever the way of life you have, you have past backlog, carried forward thing from the yesterday, last year, last life, if you are believing, accepting the reincarnation and re-becoming, thing happens. So they happen one with one character. It is unrelated to the present moment. 
It's happy like mystics. Happy like unrelated. So you hardly report that kind of thing in your report. So therefore if uh, someone is practicing fairly good in 15 minutes, 10 minutes, so complete mindfulness, sitting and walking, but still it's a kind of a discouraging thing. If he or she cannot report it, it's an utter mistake of the teacher. Utter mistake of teaching. So it must be taught. Not the first uh, lap whereby you can keep the mindfulness with the uh, primary object 10, 15 minutes, 10, 15 cycles or 10, 15 seconds. So whenever it happens, you have to understand the second challenge whereby you are directed dispositions. They happen whenever the senses, eye, ear, nose, tongue and the body, becoming, they become restful. They are not gaining any new impingements. Then your storeroom, psychological wound surface. If you do not go prepared, you will see what the hell that way. I am successfully meditating, but I am get up and go. I don't know what happens. But everything mapped. Everything Buddha has uh, reported there. When disease happens, that can happen. So only the purpose of this talk is each and everyone must report it. Don't consider it as a something wrong. Don't consider that uh, unrelated distractions me or mine or myself. But your, your scientific uh, approach must be just report. And then everyone will say, yes, yes, mine also the same. You are the only person reported, but I am also the same. So when I'm meditating in 70, 1978, 79, or early 80s, I used to go to Nilambe and many are foreigners. No one is meditating. I'm also, I never ask questions. I never write reports. There's no regular systems. But uh, some other very serious fellows, they are coming from different countries and spending few days, and they are reporting. My English also was very poor at that time. And they are reporting exactly my questions. So I thought something wrong. I thought Sudha fellows coming from the different countries are no problem. They are completely coming from heaven. And they should not have any problems like me. I am just a bumpkin coming from the village. But what they are reporting exactly what I have to report. So Godwin used to ask, uh, do you have anything to report? I didn't know nothing because that whatever you all are talking, exactly a repetition of me. I thought other people don't have questions. I thought I am the only person having the weaknesses and the questions and uh, problems, but exactly the same. But we hide it. That is our uncultured nature. This is our uh, reptilian nature. This is our animal nature. But this time is Buddha's time. Once you express it, we become human. Otherwise, we become reptilians. We become shape-shifting. We become animist, uh, the, our amygdala take the upper hand. But instead, if you know how to give the chance for the free frontal lobe, where the civilized mind and the rational mind is working, you are just reporting whatever the weaknesses, as if someone else. Do you think the teacher going to punish you? No. If punishing, the teacher must be punished. This is the way we learn the truth of suffering. Even though we keep the track with the primary object, so much of minutes, but there is a second layer of defilements. There are already arisen defilements embedded in our mind, and the body, they come out as far as no new uh, sensuous impingements are there. Then you understand, more you let them come, more you let the psychological wounds to happen, that is called catharsis, that's called free association, we call counseling, your healing starts. So that is what we call the counseling and free association, let the people talk. First time when the Sigmund Freud introduced it, 
So he had the time with the patient, and patient is having the tension, frustration, bipolar, this and that, all the questions. Just talk. By just talking, released. And then he wrote, Sigmund Freud, when the patient is talking, you must listen like a deaf. You must never respond to him or her. Let them just talk. The day he touched the root cause, answer is there. You must not disturb, you must you just, the catharsis to take place. All the disciples of the Sigmund Freud misunderstood. But after maybe a few decades, decades time, uh, John Munns, no, Eric Fromm, he had a relationship with the Zen master and came to know Buddha also had the same tactic. Buddha says, even though you have ears, behave like a deaf. Even if you heard something, stop at that level, don't ruminate it. Don't again and again brood upon that. That is about yourself. The Sigmund Freud is talking about someone else. So then they started to find the Buddhist and philosoph the Sigmund Freudian philosophy. How can we let that wrath, how can we let, let that pus and the carp to come out? You to let it happen. Otherwise you are going to the whole backlog, you are going to take to the next life. As if you are sleeping today, you are, next day morning you will get up with the same old characters. You never evolve. No metamorphosis. But the day you understand your inherent characteristics or directed dispositions, or hidden characters, we call subconscious characteristics, it's a great achievement, it's a great healing possible today. It is in the present day, it's in the present day literature is called, this is what you call placebo effect. You heal by yourself, no chemicals, no therapy, by accepting. You just accept the breath at the beginning, or the rising and falling at the beginning, so when it's happening continuously, there's a kind of a, another tap going to open. Your dispositions, very difficult. Many people go mad at that time. That's why the, uh, many people, while meditating, they send mad. My, many, many of my teachers, they give up the job. They are not teaching now because they say, by meditating, people go mad. Ultimately, we, have become, we become very responsible, so I don't teach meditation. I don't believe like that. I think our dialogue, our interviews, will alleviate it. Because we go prepared. This is the second strength. First thing, not to have or oh, unrisen defilements to not to arouse. The second thing is already arisen defilements uh, understand it. It's just by looking at it because we have just like a tip of an iceberg only one ninth, one tenth is above the water level and nine parts under the water. So our social behavior is one tenth. We have the social life and the reputation and name and the degrees and all the kind of thing. But what is underneath is given the upward movements that never tackled, never tackled. But in the meditation, third day, fourth day, while you are nicely meditating, there are this kind of uh, unexpected thing can happen. So it has to be very patient. Otherwise you will get up and go, what the hell that all of a sudden I, I go to see different colors and different smells and different sounds and unrelated dreams and kind of thing. But it is a kind of a sign of healing, kind of catharsis. So you have to report them. You have to put them into writing. And when it's happening, it says, this is the skillfulness for the kindness to yourself. 
not like working like a, 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 a the beast of burden i feel so sorry about the today's educated people they have no mercy about themselves they are completely programmed they have no agenda except the what the boss is telling they are robots like ultimately at the end desperate but instead now you understand the skillfulness i have to be calmed down and look at it but it's not so beautiful it is giving a bad smell and when you go deep dive still you have the wrath i am i to keep that burden all the time and run or just wait let that go out let that catharsis happen let that psychological wounds to come out and then you learn kind of a skillfulness whereby you consider your well being with corona with economic recession and with that uh, all the kind of uh, bad thing happening on the scientific world now we have to understand this you have to i put it in a simple way it is little harsh be mindful and mind your own business we think no 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 it is basically be mindful and be mind your own business is very selfish i become enlightened my mother is not going to get something father is not going to get something children going to get something so we think very broad and high but you are in a boggy place you can't raise anyone so first and foremost you have to go to a dry place and understand doing nothing is meditation doing nothing means meditation when the mind to let happen every positive thing happens whatever you do whatever you do intentionally volitionally willfully it's creating karmic forces sabbe sankhara dukha sabbe sankhara dukha therefore whatever you do emotion uh, the willfully you are answerable in the body there are two things one thing is what is happening with the parasympathetic nervous system breathing is natural thing self is not necessary and uh, heartbeat growing of your teeth and hair they are, whether you like it or not it's happening they never create any karmic forces but if you are thinking anything if you are volitionally doing something sabbe sankara dukkha so therefore it is making you passive like making you not doing something like so pandita said to used to say if the nowadays we are not running our generator 15 hours per day because now we have the electricity otherwise whenever the generator is running you can study it you have to stop it then only you can study the generator this is the power generator this is the electric generator power this is the power section this is the generator so without stopping it you can study the machine so we are stopping our machine sit close your eyes observe what is happening so people call this is very selfish doing nothing so therefore you have to go for break dance you have to go for high speed and ultimately you break your neck so therefore the more skillful thing is doing nothing that is called upon the Uh, reduction of unwholesome thing now you learn what is the meaning of wholesomeness and this we are very uh, talking and shouting and thinking and giving advice to others but your mind is utterly filthy it's full of um, unskillful deeds you don't know how to stop it once you stop it you can understand is the most skillful thing but as far as we have one upmanship as far as we are chasing behind our results as far as we have goal and try, try to reach the goal we are we are wiling away our time so therefore this is the third strength you are understanding there is a skillfulness it's highly related with your well being to the what we are eating is a poison the man made societies utterly uh, 
unnatural. Imagine this forest. Carbon dioxide, no carbon dioxide, oxygen rich world. Imagine this water, utterly pure. We are breathing is not the someone in a exhalated thing. We have fresh air. One uh, Holland or Dutch fellow became a monk and he goes in the Kuti number one and his mother and auntie, father all came in the wrong time. But anyway, look, our precepts preceptor told let them come because they are foreigners. So when they come, one person from the office went there and told this is the, the dwelling house or the hermitage. He is living. You can go, maybe he is meditating. His mother got stuck telling that particular person is having so much of oxygen acres. What a luxurious life. Imagine you are in a, in a flat, you don't have walking path, without gas you can't live, without electricity you can't live, without tap water you can't live. What a chicken, broiler chicken, brought up in the battery system. But instead, instead his auntie came to the room and he was there auntie how are you what about my parents they are stuck there in the in the junction they can't come but they feel so jealousy one particular monkey is having so much of forest periphery having so much of fresh air we started as barbarians and aboriginals we were in the forest we came out and started the villages and then the cities and the towns and the capital cities, we ruined. That's why the Buddha says before meditation, just go into the forest. Just sit under a tree. Just go for a blank place like this, no sensuous pleasure. That itself is skillfulness. But this is a very starting point of the skillfulness. Then you can think about your well-being. Moment you develop your well-being, you will become a worthwhile human being to the society. Not by education qualification. Not by your movable and immovable properties. Not anything. So there's a huge array of skillfulness you have to develop. So that is how a monk... That's how a meditator develop one's own energy, one's own qualities. They are already in within ourselves. It is nothing. This is not the creatures or creature, creators thing. We are not creatures. We have whole potential. But to start, you have to understand how to catalyze the inner potential, inner possibility and uh, capacity, that's why each and, each, each and every human is a very phraseworthy and very valuable phenomena. But if you are not meditating and talking and shouting and make yourself busy, sorry, you are just wasting energy and creating so much of carbon dioxide. But instead you are meditating, you are using less oxygen, less carbon dioxide, and your vibrations are good vibration, and societies naturally become a peace. Because you become a peacemaker. Because you are not you are not wasting anything. So that skillfulness is yet to come. Then only the Buddha says uh, the king's the thoroughbred horse become a king's feature. So likewise each and every meditator become a feature to the human nature. Otherwise we are just wasting away. So therefore it is difficult. First step of being mindful, I be called bear attention. And second thing is steadfast mindfulness. Even the difficulties are there, you somehow or the other cut through. And one day you will understand that's the best for my well-being. Otherwise you expect the God to come. 
you expect the salmon to come and say rescue you and then you find we are just at the brink we have to do a lot about one's well-being don't expect someone to do it so as far as you are mindful in this momentary momentary mindful moment by moment you don't know that the momentum it is gathering the acceleration it is gathering is enormous so therefore you have to go prepared specifically when we are doing a group meditation and in a residential retreat the momentum is very fast so therefore prepare your mind because we are going to be a thoroughbred horse whereby we become a, a part and parcel of the king's property so we can do a lot to the fellow human being by simply be mindful here and now with that remark i would like to sum up the day's talk thank you very much for listening